Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Indra Ayud and this is Naman. Today, we will be presenting the dwelling Nelson paradox, which centers around two very interesting English words. And what adjective is said to be autological if it describes itself. For example, pentaxilabe, it has five syllables. Bangali, which means Bengali word, it is written in Bengali. Now, bit of a grey area, but fun examples like the uh, word Dev Nagari written in Dev Nagari script. Does the way of writing a word change the fact if it is autological or not? Or tiny written in very tiny fonts? Or uppercase written in uppercase? Or fuchsia written in fuchsia? Similarly, heterological is an adjective which does not describe itself. For example, monosyllabic, which is certainly not monosyllabic. Bengali, which is an English word. Dev Nagri written in Latin script. Tiny, which is huge. Camel case, which is not clearly camel case. Or cerulean written in fusion. The key question the paradox asks is heterological, heterological. Well, if yes. It's heterological. If no, it's not logical. But if heterological is heterological, it describes itself. And so by definition, it's autological. But if it's heterological is autological, then it does not describe itself. And so by definition, it's heterological. Either way, we run into a contradiction and get stuck in this infinite loop. So both possibilities are actually impossibilities. And that is the paradox. But what causes this paradox? Have we made a silly mistake somewhere? Is the problem the ambiguities of the English language? Are we getting confused between words, their meanings, their string representations, or is math just broken? So to find this, we will try to model adjectives, the central object of our study, in terms of a more familiar mathematical object, sets. We will model each adjective as the set of objects which are described by that adjective. The roses are red, apples are two, with fire and blood I present red to you. This is simply the set of all red objects. We can have the set of solid objects. We can have the set of solid red objects formed by the intersection of the previous two sets. Paradoxical objects or objects which are useful, interesting, beautiful, confusing. Which is the singleton set mathematics. <laughs> With these, oh. am I audible at the back? Yeah, I don't mind speaking. Yeah, is I quoting? Yeah, I think I can speak. So, yeah. If they say no, that is a paradox. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, what do you mean by that now? <laughs> there is a instant paradox generated. In yeah. So uh, with these, uh, with this modeling of adjectives, we will redefine our central keywords, autological and heterological, in the language of sets. So consider the set of pentasyllabic, it contains the word educational, autological, but more crucially, the word pentasyllabic itself. So this suggests the definition of autological words to be adjectives which contains themselves. Similarly, monosyllabic contains many words which are monosyllabic, but not monosyllabic itself. So heterological can be defined as a set of adjectives which does not contain itself. So, the paradox can be boiled down to this, if H is a set of adjectives which does not contain itself, does H contain itself? What started off as a rather silly question, now is eerily reminiscent of a very fundamental and famous paradox at the heart of mathematics. If omega is the set of all sets that do not contain themselves, does omega contain itself? Russell's paradox, discovered independently by Russell, Zermelo, and several others, demonstrates the failure of naive set theory, developed by uh, Cantor in the late 19th century, as Pantanus just said. And it forces a move away from 
this naive intuitive description to a more formal, rigorous, axiomatized way of thinking about steps. There are several ways to do this. Russell proposed his own type theory. Von Neumann and others proposed the NBG theory with classes as well as sets. But uh, the standard description, which uh, most uh, mathematical descriptions start with, is the ZFC. And so do we. The ZFC axioms by Zermelo Frankel, taken with the axiom of choice. And uh, specifically, we choose the flavor of ZFC, which considers every object to be a set, including natural numbers, defined as sets. So we will uh, see Russell's paradox demonstrates. <laughs> Does the slide contain that is also an interesting question to think about. Uh, Russell's paradox demonstrates the parallel of universal comprehension, where we are allowed to construct a set of all objects satisfying any given property. As we just saw, it leads to meaningless, confusing sets. So Mello replaced this by the axiom of specification, which requires that a set A already exists and we can create a subset from it of objects which obey the given property. And uh, this now forces us to define omega not as x such that x is a set, but instead as x, subset, x an element of sigma such that x does not belong to x. Where sigma is the set of all sets, does sigma exist? Uh, let's look at another axiom of ZFC, namely axiom of regularity, which says that every non-empty set S contains an element X which is disjoint from S, which means then uh, there exists an element X in S so that S intersect L X is uh, null set. So this allows us So, so basically, this axiom of specification is using one uh, universal set. A is acting as a universe with respect to which you are talking about. That yeah, was not existing yes. for uh, universal comprehension. Right? Yes. We, from uh, where you pick that X was not clear. Whereas here, at least, I have one A. From that A, I'm picking X, satisfying the property. Yes. yes. And since we want uh, omega to be the set of all sets which do not contain themselves, that A is supposed to be the set of all sets, right. which we are yeah. we will now prove. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, see, we let sigma to be set of all sets and consider the single set, the singleton set of sigma. Now there exists some element y in A such that A intersect Y is a null set by regularity. So, but the only element here is sigma. So, we can write so that implies that sigma does not contain sigma. So, this proves that we cannot construct a set of all sets. Uh, that's the axiom of regularity. For every non empty yeah. set X, yeah. we have that. That are supplied on sigma. The axiom of regularity says that every non empty set must contain an element which is disjoint with itself. So, it's sigma intersection sigma Z. Which is, oh. Perhaps my phrasing should be clear, which is disjoint with S, the original non empty set. Uh, no, we are, take, we are applying regularity on the set A, which is the set containing sigma. So there is an element Y of A such that it intersected with A is sig, uh, the null set. Oh, yeah. That statement you have to apply on sigma. 
A, okay, our A is uh, the set sigma and Y is sigma itself. Yeah. Is that clear to everyone? Yeah. Uh, uh, any question, you please uh, feel free to ask. So, since you reordered the sigma and the set sigma, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 when you rewrite, yeah, what you yeah, do yeah. is you align that yeah. with the definition symbols used in the definition for example. Yeah. Then application of that uh, axiom of regularity here. See what happens is right now people are not able to connect yes and x with the sigma and a which is yeah. here. Right? They continue to use the same symbolism, then the application will become clear. That's okay. Good. Just a suggestion. Okay. So the proof shows that we cannot uh, create a set of all set. So we cannot create any set psi from set of all set with any property p. So omega is also meaningless under ZS because we are taking the universal set which does not contain itself. So again, is, is so, heterological heterological? Well. The question is asked in English, and English is a natural language. English does not have a set of axioms it is built upon. We can only answer this in a mathematical way once we model English by a mathematical theory. We initially tried to model it using naive set theory. Uh, autological is to set x such that x is an adjective and x belongs to x. That leads to contradictions. As we just observed, since naive set theory is itself inconsistent. We then tried to model it using ZFC, but then we got to the conclusion that the word heterological can simply not be allowed to exist. We can try other theories, such as ones with the classes as a collection of sets, and we might come to the conclusion that heterological is a word, it's just not allowed to be an adjective or something similar. But no matter what uh, modeling we apply, English itself is just too strong. Its syntax is too unrestricted, and the regular semantics applied to it will inevitably lead to paradoxes all the time. This is the first of today, but it's certainly not going to be the last. Thank you.